here's the big question. You're interested in value investing and valuing and evaluating businesses on a deep level, but you don't know how, even after researching for hours, probably dozens of hours, hundreds of hours on the internet, and because nobody else shows you how to do it. This podcast has all those answers and much more about value investing and finance. My name is Jason Rivera. Welcome to Value Investing in Your Car. Hey, Jason here. In this episode of Value Investing in Your Car, I'm going to tell you how to not be replaceable by robots and automation. Before we get to that, though, I need to let you know that you can. this series is available as a podcast, and you can listen to it anywhere in the world for free on all major podcasting platforms, um, iPhone, or iTunes, sorry, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Anchor, um, and more. You can listen to this podcast or this series as a podcast on any podcasting platform in the world for free. So anytime I talk to anybody about the next 20 or 30 years, I get really excited. I think the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years are going to bring as much positive transformation as the last 50 years has. Um, Probably even more so because of technology and the rapid technological and medical and frankly, frankly, social um, progress has been made over the last 50 years. I get excited when talking about the next 50 years or the future at all for those reasons. And I'm a sci-fi nerd and I love science and I love technology. I love innovation. I love this kind of stuff. I talk about it forever. I get excited about it. Most people don't. Most people don't because they're worried about having their jobs and their livelihoods replaced by robots and automation. And I get it. Robots and automation are going to take, not take, replace an enormous amount of jobs over the next, probably even starting within the next 10 years. It's already been done. Amazon has started putting robots in their facilities and their fulfillment centers. It's coming. But I don't believe all the doom and gloomers. I think it's going to have a positive effect on not only us as people, but society as a whole much like over the last 50 years or even over the last 100 years. I'm reading a book called The Better the Better Angels of Ourselves, I think is what the title is, by Steven Pinker right now. I'm an extremely optimistic person. I think the last decade was the best decade we've ever lived in. I think the 2020s are going to be the best decade, decade we've ever lived in. I think it's going to continue progressing. Yes, there will be ups and downs. There will be recessions. There will be wars. There will be famines. But in general, I think things are still going up for human civilization on earth. We've become less violent. We've become better people. We've become nicer. We've become more productive. We've, I think in general, we've got better medicine. We're living longer. We're healthier. Mental health, not so much, but that's a completely different topic. And more, I think outside of mental health, pretty much everybody has better lives now worldwide than we've ever had in human history. I read an article the other day that extreme poverty which is designated as living on uh, more than $2 a day, is at its lowest level in recorded human history. I think the times we're living in are amazing. I think the technology we have is amazing. I think all these doom and gloomers and people say how much life sucks. Frankly, they're missing out. And they're going to miss out over the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years as well. So having said that, here's how I go about not being replaced by robots. Again, I'm optimistic. I know it's going to happen, but here's how I go about me personally, so I can't get replaced by robots and automation. I learn as much as I possibly can, as fast as I possibly can. Last year I calculated out and I learned, read, wrote, watched, and listened to the equivalent of about 15 million words, uh, written words. That's mind boggling. (laughs) But the reason I learn so much and the reason I learn constantly is because I want to become not irreplaceable because everybody's irreplaceable. But I want to, I don't want to be able to be replaced by robots and automation. I was having this conversation with a colleague um, the other day about we're doing some research into tech trends and stuff that's happened over the next 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. And again, I just think this stuff's amazing. So I studied it on my own. Um, so I know quite a bit about it. And he asked me a question about my skill set. And I said, frankly, I said pretty much the same thing I just said to you is, while I don't work to become irreplaceable because I don't necessarily believe in that, I work to become, to refine my 
skills and essentially stay ahead of robots and automation. I just finished up the book, The Innovators, and they talk about the rise of the semiconductor industry and the computing industry and the internet and all that. And I, the big kind of end belief of the book is that robots, AI technology is not going to take over for people in terms of them becoming smarter than us. It's going to be humans and computers and AI and robotics working together to kind of go to a different level. I think that's what's going to happen. Do I think something like Skynet could happen from the Terminator movies where machines take over? Yes, I do. But I don't think hopefully we're smart enough where we wouldn't allow that, allow that to happen. Again, eternal optimist. So what I do is I learn as much as I can, as fast as I can, so that when it gets to the point where computers and AI and robotics and automations are working kind of hand in hand with people, it will just take me to another level. So I can't be really replaced because machines, I don't think in my lifetime we'll see machines that can replace humans in terms of creativity and critical thinking, creativity and critical thinking, enormously important. And they're still to this day, no matter how smart computers are in 2020, we, they still can't designate things that two and three year olds can't. So I think that, I don't think we'll see that in my lifetime and I'm 33. So I'll probably, according to science, I should be able to live to about 120. My generation should be able to live about 120 on a regular basis with medical advancements and stuff like that based on current projections. Again, you know what I think about projections, but just kind of think about it logically, that makes sense. So by that logic, I've got another, was that just under 90 years, like 87 years left in my life. And I don't think in my lifetime we'll see robots completely take over the creative and critical thinking side of the human mind. I think it will be humans and machines working in concert together to kind of, again, reach another level. But this is how I stay ahead of that as well is I learn valuable skills that involve critical thinking and creativity. And I'm constantly learning new and valuable skills and new and valuable mental models and new and valuable ways to think so I can't be replaced. If people aren't working to learn constantly, if people aren't working to improve their skills constantly, you might be replaced at some point in your lifetime by a robot or automation or AI if you aren't learning and doing those things constantly. Illiteracy pretty much worldwide with the invention of the internet, obviously, I yes, I know places don't have the internet and there still is illiteracy in the world. But I read a quote the other day that this, um, this generation's version of illiteracy isn't gonna be the ability to not be able to read and write, it's the ability to be able to learn something and then change your mind when you learn something new. That will be this generation's illiteracy is the inability to learn and improve your skills and knowledge. And that's why I'm learning constantly. Again, I don't think about this on a daily basis. I need to outsmart the robots. I'm thinking I need to improve myself so I can get to my next level and then continually move up and up and up and up and up and up. Um, so I become more successful over the long term. This isn't going to happen. I know this is going to happen all of a sudden tomorrow. It's been a 13 year long journey and I'm still waiting for that kind of one big pop. Uh, I know this is a long-term thing, but I know that if I continually learn, I'm going to be not only ahead of machines, but also ahead of my peers as well. Because frankly, most people in my generation, once they finish college, they don't ever read anymore. They don't learn new skills. They just kind of do what they've been doing. And maybe this isn't my generation thing. Maybe it's just a, actually not a thing, but it's probably just people like to get in habits and they don't learn and improve and they don't continually try to get uh, better themselves. So I think this will become a huge competitive advantage over time, or I know it will, learning and improving and learning valuable skills, uh, improving critical thinking, improving creativity. This will all work to become a huge competitive advantage in time for people that do it. Um, highly recommend you do it. And again, I'm the ultimate optimist, but it's coming. So if you want to stay ahead of robots and automation and AI, you need to learn and learn valuable skills, uh, you need to learn or you might be replaced in the future. Again, I'm an op extreme optimist, but it, I'm also a realist. It's coming. Um, and to go back to my previous example of Amazon and, or not Amazon, 
of robots and AI and automation working in concert with humans. While Amazon has opened up their floors and their fulfillment centers for robotics, they've also hired more people. It's their ability for the robots to take kind of the repetitive work away from humans has allowed them to hire more people at their fulfillment centers to do things more efficiently. To get Pete, those people are now earning decent wages at Amazon. More people are earning those wages because of the robotics um, and the automations. And I think that is kind of the model that we're going to see over the next 20, 30, 50 years, whatever. So, um, but this is what I do on a daily basis to improve myself, to improve for you, to hopefully one day become more successful and work towards my goals and dreams and to help more people. Um, and I truly believe that's how you do what you need to do as well. If you don't, if you want to become, or if you don't want to be replaced by robots and automations at some point, because again, it's coming, um, there's no stopping it. It's, it's happening right now. So, <laughs> um, to stay ahead of it, you need to learn, learn valuable skills. Cannot preach this enough to anybody I talk to. I'm even starting to talk to my um, nine and six year old daughters about it, about learning skills and reading and being knowledgeable and just constantly improving and working to improve yourself. So I hope this helps. Um, I'd love to hear your plans on how you plan to become, to fend off, I guess would be a better way, to fend off the coming robot and um, automation wave. And uh, love to hear your thoughts on that. Hope this helped. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like, love, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you're notified anytime we release a new video. Um, leave a comment. Love to hear your thoughts on this. I answer all comments myself on YouTube. If you're listening to this on the podcast, do the same stuff. Like, love, share, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. Deeply appreciate it. Um, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day. Talk soon. Bye.